Today we're going to learn how to use the Octatrax Arranger Mode, which is a song mode that Electron wrote for their flagship devices, the Octatrack, the Analog Rhythm, and the Analog 4. And it's something that I think gets ignored by most people because it just feels like another layer of complexity to learn on some already quite complex devices, especially with the Octatrack. However, the Octatrax Arranger is actually a little simpler than you might think and it's very akin to a tracker. So those of you who are familiar with trackers, I believe, should be able to understand this fairly quickly. And those of you who are not, well, that's what this tutorial is for. The first thing you have to do is hit this ARR button, and that's gonna take you into the Arranger menu. And this doesn't mean that the Arranger is active, it just means that you're in the Arranger menu. So you have Edit, Rename, Change, Chain, Clear, Save, and Reload. And these functions aren't that useful except for edit right off the get-go. So without going into edit and starting to build your first arrangement, these other functions don't really have any purpose. So we're gonna hit yes to go into edit. Immediately we're prompted with this message that says arrangement is empty, press function plus down to insert a row. So that's what we're gonna do. Function, down, we inserted our first row and I have it highlighted on pattern A01. Now if I wanna change the pattern that is in this row, I can use the pattern button and select a pattern, and also the bank and select a bank. Pretty cool, maybe you wouldn't have thought to try that right away, so that's a nice little tip. So like you can see here, it says pattern A01, you can also use this encoder to change that, and below that you have halt, but we're not gonna talk about halt yet. We will get to it though. So I'm gonna leave it on A01 because that's the pattern that I wanna use. I have two patterns in the Octatrack that I wrote for this tutorial. I made them very quickly, but I think that they have some more obvious sounds that we can use to create a song out of those two patterns. You can see it says PAT, it means pattern, as we've been talking about patterns. To the right of that, it says rep, which means repetition. So when it's blank like this, or that white square as it's highlighted at the moment, that means it's only gonna repeat just the one time. So the next step up from that is two, and it goes all the way to 64. I don't know why you would have one pattern repeat 64 times, but you do you. Now, beyond that is this 000-064, and it says of an LN. And I bet you guessed LN meant length, but what does of mean? Of means offset. So what you can do is turn the encoder here, and you can offset the start position of your pattern. Now, something that confused me right away, and I'm going to clear it up for you if you'd make the same guess based on what you're looking at here, is that this offsets the pattern by 32 steps, so it'll start on step 33. But it won't play to step 64. It's actually going to play from step 33 for 64 steps. So it'll go from step 33 and then pass step 64, because this is a 64 step pattern, and then it will start back over at one and play the remaining 64 steps, or the remaining steps after that. It'll fulfill 64 steps of your pattern in a loop. That's interesting, right? And it means that you can arrange things in very intricate and complex ways. So if you had a part of a song that was just the last 16 steps of a 64 step loop, you could have the arranger play just 16 steps. So we could say, play from step 48 for only 16 steps and then move on to the next part. So you can create an intro or you can create a bridge or you can just create some variations of your patterns that you maybe hadn't thought of. It allows you to play with a band. Bands have bridges or spots in a song that like hang for an extra couple of steps or they start in the middle of a progression. That's something that you actually can do in the arranger mode here. And with that simple concept of an offset and the length of how long a pattern plays for, you can actually arrange your kid songs. I'm actually gonna clear that Function, clear, cleared the row, so now it's back to zero, so it's gonna play the normal length of our pattern, which is what I want. But let's go over here and talk about scene. So what scene is, and this is pretty cool, is it allows you to choose some scenes that your A scene starts on and your B scene starts on. And you can actually plug them in like this, so I can go A, nine, and so scene nine on A, and then I move over to the next spot, and then I go B, 10. I could maybe even do A, 10. Yeah, doesn't seem to matter. So 
as long as I'm holding one of these two scenes, I can plug in one of my scenes down here. And I only have scenes on 9, 10, and 11 in this project, so that's why I chose that. So I'll use, what, scene 11 for the next one. You can actually use your scenes as ways to transition from patterns. So you don't even have to use your encoder here. This would be like, you could create entire offsets to patterns by using scenes that maybe are just used for your arranger and then other scenes that are used for performance. That's just an idea. So we'll leave it like that. And let's move over to T, which stands for transpose. And this only applies to MIDI tracks. So you hit yes when you're over here, and then you can offset by semitones per track. I will demonstrate it to you really quick. I have the Octatract hooked up to the Sequential Take 5, which is my newest acquisition. And I love it very much. It sounds fantastic. If you're thinking about picking up a new polysynth that's got a smaller form factor, but sounds gigantic, check out the Take 5. First, we're gonna go to Pattern 3, because I don't want this to layer on top of the other music. So I'm gonna go to Pattern 3, and here we go. Just put down a couple of steps. Okay, so I've put some steps down on our MIDI track. The reason why I haven't written anything a little more complex than just one note is because I'm actually gonna just show you the offset feature and something that you can do that's cool with it that is very akin to trackers, and that is just using static note lines and then offsetting it with your arranger mode. So let's go back into our arranger, back into edit, and we'll hit function down, 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 and we're gonna change this to pattern three and this one to pattern three, and this one to pattern three. And let's just have the length play for, when we clear these scenes out, I don't need those scenes, and clear them all. Let's just have it play for 16 steps, because that's how long this pattern is. It, it knew that, and it put that in for us. So it immediately puts in the master length, and when you're using the per track basis of step length or um, scale length per track, this is actually adjusting your master track. So that's just a little tidbit of knowledge for you. So we're gonna pay attention to the transpose track here. So we're gonna hit yes. We're using MIDI channel or MIDI track one, which is MIDI channel one as well. And we're going to just leave it alone actually. Let's go down to the next one and we'll offset it by um, three semitones. And let's go to the next one and we'll offset it by five semitones. So now I need to turn on the arranger function plus arrange. The red light turns on here to let you know you're in arranger mode. This is important. You should pay attention to that. If you accidentally turn on your arranger when you're trying to perform live and you don't have anything in your arrangement, this will cause your Octatrack to stop playing. So yeah, important. Okay, so let's get out of here. And now you can see this is our arrangement. We have our original track here. But I want to skip down to this next column or this next row. And I can do that with the arrows. It's really cool. This is one of the cool features about it. So I'm going to go down here and hit yes. And now I've bumped it down to row one from row zero, zero, zero. I hit yes already. So now I'm going to hit play. And our arrangement ended. So there you go. You got to see the MIDI offset and uh, how useful that can be. So it's kind of cool. All right, let's go back into our arranger, back into edit. And I'm going to delete those rows because we don't want them. I don't need them. To delete rows, you hold function and press up. Let's go to the row here and go pop. We're back on pattern A01. We just talked about MIDI transpose. Let's move on to the next segment, and that is BPM. So this is where you program what BPM you want per row. So you could do some cool stuff with this as well. You could have a pattern play for only 16 steps, but half the BPM. So then you can get kind of like a halftime feel. Or you could double the speed and get a double time pattern. And also you can just arrange tons of songs this way and have all their own tempos, which originally was the only way to get different tempos per pattern on the Octatrack before they updated it and added tempo per pattern, which is something we were all very grateful to receive. That's what the B does. I'm gonna program in uh, 131, I guess. So this next one is my favorite feature of the Arranger, and this is the most useful feature, I think, and it's the thing that makes the Arranger super powerful, and that is the mute mode. So you hit yes here, and bam, there's our mixer for our mutes. 
or what would look like the mixer setup when you press the mixer button, this happens. So it happens here as well. Here you get to program what tracks are muted and not muted during the arrangement. So this is very similar to pattern mutes on the Digitac or the Digitone, which I think is incredibly useful for live performance. There is a way to set this up. There's a lot of tricks you can do with the arranger to mimic pattern mutes on the Digitac or Digitone um, by using what is called loop, which is a function I haven't shown you yet, but we'll get to it. So if we wanted to arrange this to have it work like every 64 steps, a new element of our song comes in, that would be the most basic way to do this or to demonstrate this. What we would do is we would mute some of the tracks. So I'm gonna mute all these tracks, except for track eight, because that's a master track. And then I'm going to create a new scene. I'm gonna go into the mute section here and I'm gonna unmute the drums. And then I'm going to leave, create a new scene, and now I'm going to unmute this element. And then we'll just do those three because we don't want this to take forever because I think you get the idea. So I can actually start playing the arrangement from here, and it's just going to be drums at the moment. Maybe I'll actually go in and, and add a, a melodic element here. We'll put the bass line in on all of them. Okay. That's it. Pretty cool, right? Pretty similar to having pattern mutes on the Digitac. Very useful and definitely why I bought the aux track to begin with was to be able to create complex arrangements. Let's talk about some other functions that exist inside the arranger that you have to kind of dig to find. Let's create a new row to check these features out. Function down. So I'm going to use the encoder here, the level encoder and I'm gonna to go to the left, and there's Remark. Remark uses one of your rows, and you have plenty of them, so it's not a big deal, but that's just something to note that it is going to alter the number. When you're using things like Jump, which is something we haven't talked about yet, you don't wanna to jump to a row that has Remark. So make sure that you move your right arrow over and highlight this segment, hit yes. This allows you to name segments in your arrangement or give you an indicator of where you are in a set. And this is also very useful if you're gonna try and use your Octatrack as a DJ mixer, where each one of these patterns is a new song and you're crossfading between them and you wanna know what song it is, this is how you would do that. Okay, cool. So here we have intro. If I wanted to move this row somewhere, I could hold function, hit copy, and I can copy that row. And I could go in right here and add another row and then I could paste that row. So now I could go over here and delete that. Now notice when I highlight intro and hit play, it actually starts playing on the next row because this doesn't act as a row that can be played or jumped to, which is cool. So the Octatrack has that figured out for you. You don't have to worry about that. But when you're using the jump command, you do have to think about that because you can tell it to jump to that row. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another row again. So press down, here's my new row. And we're gonna go to halt, and then we're gonna hit the right arrow. It's saying halt the song on the fourth row. And if I turn the level encoder here, I can get into the loop section. The way loop works is when this counter hits the row that has loop on it, the rows prior to loop are available for you to choose to loop. So you can choose the row. So say I want it to loop row one or row zero, this is what I was talking about. Row zero can't loop, it's the intro. So we want to loop row one. How long do we want it to loop for? We can have it loop infinitely. That's a really cool feature and think about what you can do with that. So you could have a song that has all this really intricate structuring and then at a certain part of that song, you hit an infinite loop, which means that you can just sit there and tinker. You can tinker on your Octatrack and play. It's not going to advance. It'll just stay on that pattern forever. However, here's the thing you got to think about. When you select loop 001, the Octatrack is going to tell your, arrange, your arranger to go to row one and start playing from there. And then when it hits this, it's going to do that again. So infinitely, it'll play through 001 to 003. So if you want to just play the arrangement prior to it, you would select loop 003. I'm going to change this to pattern two 
And pattern two is supposed to only play one time, but this loop function is gonna make pattern two play forever. So let's go back here. Our ranger is activated and hit play. goes it already went more than once as you can see the loop is activated so it's gonna play forever so that's a really cool feature you double press stop and it returned back to the beginning of our arrangement another cool thing to remember about the arranger what you can also do is change how many times it loops we can have it loop up to 64 times the infinite loop is really useful. <laughs> Let me show you how jump works so for us to use jump we can't be at the end of our arrangement so jump will move you forward in your arrangement and loop is capable of moving you backwards in your arrangement. So I could have this jump us to pattern four and then I can add another row here and have this loop us back to pattern one. just the one time. So what happens, pattern one played, it jumped to pattern four, pattern four played, the loop sent it back to pattern one. So then this would jump again. So basically I created a loop that goes from pattern one to pattern four. Not super useful, but I just wanted to show what the feature, how the feature works. You have to use your brain to come up with ways that you would use jump and loop. I like the idea of using loop to um, give me a moment where I can stop during an arrangement and play on the aux track, do some live resampling, kind of remix things. And then during that arranger, you can actually use this to move forward. So instead of like pressing pattern and selecting one of these steps here to move through patterns, you can move through your patterns with these arrows. And you could create some interesting ideas. One of them I had was to put a infinite loop next to all of the patterns. And then I could create different versions of that pattern with pattern mutes. Instead of unmuting tracks, I could move to different patterns so that it would be quantized. The last thing to look at inside of the arranger is halt. And halt is fairly simple. It just means that it's going to stop the octa track on this step. So instead of it being the end of the arranger, it allows you to place the end of the arrangement inside the arrangement so that you can have multiple versions of the arrangement that have interludes. In other words, the octa track stops, you say something, and then when you're done, you hit yes on the next step and hit play again, and you start playing at the next part of your arrangement. So it's important that you use your Octatrack projects and fill them with arrangements, fill them with patterns, fill them with samples. Instead of using a project with a couple of patterns, save it, okay, new project. No, 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 no don't do that. Use new patterns, use new banks. That's the best way to use your Octatrack. I think that's really important to, uh, for me to tell you um, and I say it's the best way to use your Octatrack. I, I fervently believe that to be the truth. Instead of creating a ton of new projects, it's a waste of time. And you also go to silence when you move from project to project. So if you're performing live, that's not very helpful. This arranger would be a lot more helpful performing live than you going from one project to the next project. Okay, so let's talk about the, the last thing that you can do in the arranger. And that's arranging your arrangements. So we could rename this, we'll call it song. Okay, so we have song. I just went into the change section, which allows you to change to different arrangements. You know, who would have thought? So I hit yes, and I can change to number two, which has no name, so if I wanted to name it. Oh wait, let's go to song one. Let's go into the rename section. Copy that, so function copy, I copied the name. 
go to change, number two, go to rename, paste it, and let's call it song two. Cool, so now in change, we have song one and song two. So right now we're on song two, so we're not gonna see any of our arrangement that we made. It's empty, so we'd have to start a new arrangement here. Go back to one, go back to edit, there's our arrangement. So this is how the arranger works. You also have a chain function, which allows you to say, play song one, then play song two. So now we can save our arrangement. Confirm, arrangement saved. So song one is saved. We can go into song two and save that. Arrangement saved. So now our chain function can actually work. There's no data on song two, so we can't save song two. But we don't need to put data on it. I think you understand how the arranger works at this point. So you can chain them together, which is pretty cool. Here's where you would clear your arrangement. Go here and my arrangement's gone. So that's it. That is the arranger mode on the Electron Octatrack. I'm sorry, it took so long. It's deep and there's a lot to say about it. There's a lot more that you can do with it. I haven't covered all the ground. That is definitely all the functions it has, but there is more technique that maybe I haven't gleaned yet or figured out and uh, somebody else has. So maybe do some more digging on the old YouTube if you're interested in the arranger. Anyhow, I'm Matthew, AKA EasyBot. You would like to get any of the sounds you heard in this arrangement, well, particularly the percussion stuff, you can visit my Patreon and download that sample pack. It is the WMD drum machine that I built. Feel free to join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description. If you want to support me, you can use the affiliate links that I have in the description as well to buy stuff. It helps me out and it supports the channel uh, and it costs you nothing, so. Um, you're great. I like you a lot. Thanks.